morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, Nazarene. Good morning. We want to welcome to our morning service here at Nazarene Baptist Church here in Evansville, Indiana. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. God is still good to us in spite of us. We want to welcome you that are here in the building in the physical. We want to welcome you that are watching us all around the world in our digital. That makes us fidgetal. That's a new word for us here at Nazarene. We're fidgetal. Hallelujah. And we come this morning to worship God in spirit and in truth. Yes. In the absence of our minister of music, we're still here. And our pastor, Larry A. Rasco, is here with us. And we're going to bring you the praise team in its own way. Yes. Let's go, praise team. Oh, yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord everybody. The Bible says, let us go into worship. Let's enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Anybody have anything to be thankful for on today? Anybody have a reason to give God the highest praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those of you who can and will, let us stand to our feet as we enter into worship. Amen. He's been good to me. Has he been good to you? Better than good. Hallelujah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Help me say. Oh, yes, he is. 
Jesus and all that he's done for me. I can't help but give him thanks. I can't help but give him worship. I can't help but to praise his holy name. together to lift his name. We are in interesting times. We've lost friends. We have lost jobs. We've lost patience with the timing. But one thing we have not lost throughout everything is our Amen. praise. For my God is good and he's worthy. Yeah. Oh, I will lift your name to dance and sing, free to lift my hands and worship, Lord, I'm free, Lord, I'm free, yes, I'm free to dance and sing, free to lift my hands and worship, Lord, I'm free, Lord, I'm free, yeah, yeah. Free to dance oh. and sing, free to lift my hands and worship, Lord, I'm free. Free. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. And I'll never yeah, yeah, yeah. be found. 
again. No, no, no. I thank God I'm free, yes. And I'll never be bound again. You have given us a joy and a hope, Lord. Thank God I'm free. That what we see will not always be.
Help me, Lord. Church family, our scripture today shall come out of Isaiah chapter 40, verses 18, 18 through 22. Help me, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. With whom then will you compare God? To what image will you liken him? As for an idol, a metal worker cast it, and a goldsmith overlays it with gold and fashions silver chains for it. Hmm. A person too poor to present such an offering selects wood that will not rot. They look for a skilled worker to set up an idol that will not topple. Hmm. Do you not know? <laughs> Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? <laughs> Help me, Lord. He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth. And his people are like grasshopper. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. Praise his holy name. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Pray. Church family, let us pray. Almighty and wise God, we thank you for the songs of Zion. We thank you for waking up your spirit inside of us this morning, helping us go back down memory lane, what you brought us through and what you're going to take us through. But Heavenly Father, we know that you are in control. We thank you for allowing us to come to church. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to even have church inside the four walls, inside of a house, even though sometimes we're scared. But when we look outside, we saw a squirrel eating some seeds. We saw the birds talking this morning. So Heavenly Father, we lift our hands to you. We praise in your holy and most wise name. So we ask that you just come into this service, come into our rooms, our homes, and just stir up your spirit. Remind us what you can do, what you're going to do. Now, Heavenly Father, I got two phone calls this morning. I know some people are going to have tests run this week. I told them that you'd already have everything under control. So, Heavenly Father, when I get my phone call on Wednesday, Phone call on Thursday. We're going to shout and praise your holy name because we know that you are going to bless the family so that the people are going to sh shout our praise. My Heavenly Father, I ask that you put anointing upon the word that you're going to give us today and the word that you will spread all throughout the country so that when people hear your word, we hold our heads held high and we let you have thy will and we say, why was I scared? Why was I afraid? Because you carried us thus far. Now, Heavenly Father, I ask all these blessings in thy darling son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Not because I've been so faithful, not because I've been so good. You've always been there for me to provide my every need. You were there when I was lonely. You were there in all my pain. Guiding my footsteps, the shelter from the rain. And it was you made my life complete. You are to me my everything. And that is why I see. 
Jesus, I love you because you gave. I couldn't imagine if you weren't there. Jesus, I love you because you gave. You're the peace in my storm. Your loving arms protect me. You shelter me from harm. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. My strong tower. My dearest and best friend And it was you Made my life complete You are to me my everything and That is why I see Yes, I do. Because you care, I couldn't imagine where life would be if you weren't there. Come on and say, Jesus, I love you. Yes, I do. Because you care. Where your life would be if you were in there. Come on and say, Jesus, I love you. Yes, I do. Because you care. I couldn't imagine where my life would be if you were in there.
Put our hands together and thank God for our, our praise team and our musicians. Y'all have blessed our souls today to each and every one of you. It is good to be in the Lord's house one more time, one more another again. Karen, good to see you. Been praying for you, been praying for you. Mother Pat, is that you back there? Good to see you, good to see you. To the Williams clan, good to see y'all, good to see y'all. It is good to be here and for those of you who are here and if you're visiting, we love you and we thank you. You could not get here without passing another, another church and we don't take that for granted. And for those of you who are visiting with us digitally, we appreciate you as well. Going to try to be mindful of your time so that you won't you won't click me off. But I do thank you for the moments that you've given. There's a word from the Lord today, Sister Tamara. It's going to be in Isaiah chapter 40, chapter 40, chapter 40, beginning at the 28th verse, chapter 40, beginning at verse number 28, with an emphasis on verse number 31. Reading from the NIV version, it, here's what it says. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even young folk get tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those, let me do a King James Version, but they that wait <laughs> on the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up on wings like eagles. They'll run and not get weary. They'll walk and not faint. Amen. Sometimes you just got to go KJV. Amen. They that wait. If I were to say those whose hope, some of y'all would know what I'm talking about. But we know about they that wait. Here's what I want to talk about today. Life lessons to see you through. Life lessons to see you through. The book of Isaiah is made up of 66 books. The first 39 books, Michelle, it's a story of condemnation. 
because Israel and Judah have been disobedient. First 39 chapters, it's a, it's a message of condemnation given by Isaiah to explain and warn that they are going to be captured. It happened like Isaiah said, in the first 39 chapters, Isaiah lived through those seasons. After Solomon, the kingdom was divided. The northern kingdom was made up of 10 tribes. They were called Israel. Their capital was Samaria. There were two tribes left. They, they were called the southern kingdom. They called them Judah. Their capital was Jerusalem. But they were captured. The, the, the northern tribe was captured by the Assyrians. Southern tribe was captured later by the Babylonians. And this went on for some time. They were in captivity, and while they were in captivity, they began to wonder whose God really was God. Here's what was happening. The children of Israel were living in fear. They were living in fear because of a bad theology. Here's what they concluded. They're living terrified in captivity, but they're living in captivity because they came to a bad theology. They got a bad theology based on a, a bad assumption, a wrong conclusion. They concluded that since the people who were in power worship idols, then their idols must be the true God. They concluded since heathens beat them and had them in captivity, that the idols they worshiped were the ones to make it happen. Y'all, that's a bad theology. Because Arvana, here's the, real, here's the real truth. The truth is the idols did not conquer God. They just conquered Israel. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. The idols did not conquer Jehovah. They simply conquered Israel. Israel and God is not synonymous. God is God all by himself, and Israel are the ch are, are, is who God chose to be his children. But just because you're a child of God doesn't mean that you're going to automatically have victory in everything. God is not obligated to give you victory when you're walking outside of his will. Do I need to rewind it and say it again? When you're outside the will of God, God is not obligated to come and help you do what is against his will. So it wasn't the idols that conquered God. It was the idols that conquered Israel. Now here's what blows my mind. God let them. God allowed it to happen. The good God allowed a heathen nation to conquer his children for a season. They lived in fear because of a bad, because of a bad theology. But then secondly, Isaiah comes along and he teaches that, yes, this is going to be for a season, but there's some good news. Because from the 40th chapter to the end of the book, there is consolation. <laughs> Ed, I see you back there. Isn't it good to know that God loves us enough to spank us when we need it, <laughs> but he also loves us enough to pick us up in his arms and give us some, some consolation. Chapter 40 is a great start of the message of consolation that God gives to his children as he sustains them during, during a difficult season. Here's what I, you need to know. God is so good that he had Isaiah write this 150 years before it happened. Let me say it again. God is so good that 150 years before this happened, God had Isaiah write it down so that it would already be written down so that when they're going through what they're going through, they already got something to go to to hold them till they get out. I can't say that again. God loves us so much that he gives us the word in advance so that when you're going through what you're going through, you got something to go to that can sustain you to know that God's able. <laughs> he's able to keep you while you're in it, but he's also to bring you out at the appointed, 
at the appointed time. And it's a word, it's a word that really explains how foolish it is to put your faith in idols. God speaks to the children of Israel to remind them even though you're in a difficult time, it's a waste of time to put your faith, your trust, your hope in an idol. Dwight tried to read it earlier, but he got so happy he could hardly get through it because in the, earlier in the chapter, here's what the artisans are doing. Artisans are the individuals that are designing the idols for the heathens. They, they design the idol, then they, they manufacture the idol, and then after they build the idol, they got to pick up the idol, and then they got to take it to the place where they want the idol to be, and then they got to sit the idol there, and then watch this. Then one version says, zip, it says they got to nail the idol down so that the wind won't blow it over. <laughs> it's foolish to put that kind of faith in something that man made, cause when you think about it, if man can make it, that ain't good enough for me. If man can carry it, that ain't good enough for me. I don't need an, a God that I can carry. I need a God. <laughs> I need a big old God. I need, I need a God that can carry me and you and you and you all at the same time. I don't need a God that's on the corner of 867 because I ain't at the corner of 867 Walnut. I need a God that can be in Newburgh, in Henderson, in Indianapolis, on the north side, on the east side, in Hopkinsville, on Riviera Street. Oh! At the same time, he expresses to them, Pamela, it's foolish to put your faith in something that man has made. And so he lifts up a couple of kind of rhetorical questions. He says, have you not known? Don't you know? Which leads me which leads to another question. What he's really saying is this is something you ought to know. Have you not known? This is something you, you ought to know. Which leads to the question, if you don't know this, is it because you haven't been taught? Or is it because you were taught it, but didn't think it was important, but forgot it? Isn't it funny how we spend so much effort and energy and time teaching folks stuff that ain't gonna last for eternity? We spend a whole lot of money helping children become to excel in many things, but some of that stuff, they can't take it to eternity. We spend a lot of time listening. We know the top jams. We know the top dances. We know all of that stuff. But some of that stuff, y'all, it ain't going to matter. Now, I know there's going to be some dancing in heaven. I, I, I know that. I know that. And I know Sister Trudy going to be up front. I know that. I know that. But, but, but some of the stuff that we learn and invest in down here is not transferable when we get to glory. But something that we ought to know while we're down here is we need to know a little something, something about our God. Listen to Isaiah 
as he talks about his God, he calls him the everlasting God, which means, which means he was there at the beginning. He's going to be there at the end. He called him the one who created the ends of the earth, which means if you can find the end of the earth, God not only planned it, but created it. He's the one, he don't get tired. He, do, he does not get weary. The God we serve does not have to take a sabbatical. The God we serve, he doesn't need a nap in the afternoon and he doesn't fall asleep after he eats a heavy meal. He's a God who's got all power. And he doesn't need any help from anybody to be and to do the things that he needs to do. The question is, don't you know this? This is something you ought to know. Is it because you haven't learned it? Or is it because you learned it but forgot it? Has this, have you not heard? Well, if you didn't know, you at least should have heard about it. Which leads to another question. Who you been, where you been, if you hadn't heard about how good God is, where you been? Where you haven't heard the, the goodness of the Lord, the blessings of the Lord that flows to, uh, amongst all his people. Where you been if you hadn't heard about the goodness of God or who you've been hanging with? Where you haven't heard because when folk experience God, I don't care what they say, they may have the best intentions. If you go to Mark chapter one, Jesus went to the synagogue and he taught in such a way, it was so powerful that the word says, the word began to spread about him because of the way he taught. Left the synagogue, went to Simon Peter's house. His mother-in-law had a fever and he healed her. And then the text says that evening, Everybody, did I say everybody? Everybody had gone out, had text, they put it on Facebook, they text, they put it on Instagram. Everybody had lined up at Simon Peter's mama's house. Watch this, they didn't, they didn't wait for Jesus to come to their house. They found out where he was, stopped what they were doing. And you know it's hard to move sick people sometime, but they went through some effort and took the sick people where Jesus was. And the Bible says they, that he healed them. How were they able to do it? Because they heard what he had done. Over and over in scripture, People came to Jesus, people sought Jesus because of what they heard. I suggest that some of y'all, with all of that texting going on, with them master super thumbs, you ought to have somebody in your posse that ought to be talking about Jesus. One or two things ought to be happening. Number one, somebody ought to be giving a praise report about what Jesus, what God did. And if they're not giving it, you ought to be giving it. But don't let a day go by. Don't let a thousand texts go by without somewhere somebody talks about how good God is. Have I got a witness here? And let me tell you how our grandmama and them used to do it. They would start with early. He said, they would say, he woke me early, <laughs> early this morning. And then they follow up with and started me <laughs> on my way. Simone, Simone heard that prayer. Simone, baby girl, heard that prayer so much that she, she adopted it in her own little prayer. And when she used to pray, when she was a little girl, she would always talk about, I want to thank you for food on the table. <laughs> Nolene, she'd say, I thank you for clothes on my back. She heard somebody else say it. And so she said what she heard somebody else say. And I want to tell you, it's all right till you get your own testimony. Go, 
on, go on and say, <laughs> say what, what he did for somebody else. But here's what you're going to discover. If you keep walking with him, if you keep talking to him, your narrative is going to change and you'll quit talking about what he did for mama and what he did for Pat and what he did for Sister Langley and you'll start talking about what he did for me. Ain't that right, Jackie? We know what he did for Bernice. We know what he did for your daddy. But now you got your own story. You've got your own chapter because you know for yourself, have you not known how thou not heard? Uh, this is something you ought to know. This is something you ought to be hearing. And here's what you can expect. Here it is. You, you need to expect, I'm going to tell you, get out of the way. God wants to get glory out of your life again. You ought to know, you ought to know who he is. You ought to know what he can do. You should have been hearing about how he's been blessing. But you also need to know that even though you may not be where you want to be, you may not be doing what you'd like to do. Isaiah said, God sent me by here to tell you, he wants to get glory out of your life again. <laughs> Will you walk with me and help me wrap this thing up? Let me show you. In verse 29, it says, he gives strength to the weary. He gives power to the weak. He knows that we're frail and feeble. Sooner or later, our tanks gonna run empty. That's a natural thing. But here's the good news. He'll give you power. Have I got a witness here? He's a source of power. He's a source of strength. Now watch what happens in verse number 30. Verse number 29 lets you know he's a source of strength. He's a source of power. But then in verse number 30, it says, young folk do stumble and young folk do fall. Have I got a witness here? Even though we have a source of strength and a source of power, sometimes we still stumble and we fall. But wait a minute, you got to keep on reading because in verse 31, he says, but even though you fail, even though you stumble, but they, <laughs> not everybody, but they that make up their mind that I'm going to wait on the Lord. Watch what 31 says. He will renew. Wakefield would say, you missed your shout cue. Renew. In other words, he's going to give you strength again. He's going to make you strong again. And here he gives you a picture to help you see what it's like. You're going to be able to mount up on wings like an eagle. Here's the picture. But y'all city folk, y'all city folk, and y'all don't watch National Geographic, come with me to the airport. At the airport, their planes parked at the terminal. The, the, the majestic, what makes the eagle majestic is not when it's in its nest. What makes the plane majestic is not when it's parked at the airport, but it's absolutely necessary. It ain't moving, but there's a whole lot of stuff 
going on. It just looks like it's parked, but it's not just parked. While it's parked, the owner of the plane behind the scene is putting together a plan. The plane is parked, nothing majestic about that. But behind the scene, there's an owner of the plane and he's making plans for the plane. Have I got a witness here? There's a thing called flight, a uh, flight plan, flight plan. Nobody gets in the cockpit and just decide to go where they want to go, sail where they want to sail. It's tied to a flight plan. And the flight plan is made by the owner behind the scene. The owner of the, of the plane makes a flight plan and, he, and he, he gives it to the man in the tower. Cause the man in the tower has to okay everything that that plan does. Oh. And at the appointed time, there's a plan that is filed. That is preparation being made. While it's parked, some stuff is taken off. Some stuff is put on. It's calculated what it can carry. It's calculated how much fuel it will need. It'll calculate what is needed by the crew. And at the appointed time, ooh we, cause there's something that the plane can't do by itself. There's another little instrument. It's called the tug tractor. The tug tractor shows up and does something for the plane that the plane can't do for itself. The plane doesn't have a reverse gear. It gets help from the little tug tractor and the tug tractor pushes, pushes its back. It pushes its back far enough till it can operate on its own. And then, and then, and then the plane, it's time to operate on its own power. Then, in connection with the tower, then it moves where the tower tells it to move. Then it taxis all the way away from the terminal and it lines up on the appointed runway and then, <laughs> and then when the tower says cleared for takeoff, then the, the pilot increases power. It gives it power. Have I got a witness here? Power! Because you gonna need power to go beyond taxiing to get to the other level. You're gonna need power. And the pilot accelerates. He accelerates. It sounds noisy. Have I got a witness here? But in just a moment, at the appointed time, they do this thing called rotate. When they rotate, they pull the yoke back and the plane leaves the earth and soars, soars. That's what, that's what Isaiah, it's trying to tell you, God's going to get glory, glory, glory out of your life again. He'll provide everything you need so that you can. Oh. <laughs> Oh, higher and higher. Ooh. 
lessons to see you through. Lesson number one, just cause folk in power doesn't worship God means that you ought to, doesn't mean you should trade him in. Lesson number two, it's foolish. You need a God bigger than one you can carry. You need a God that has ears and can hear your cry. Mouth that can speak a word. Hands that can reach hold and hold. You need to know that you can expect God to show up if you wait on him. They that wait on him, he'll show up at the appointed time. He'll be there, but you gotta, you gotta wait on him because he's behind the scenes putting together a flight plan to take you and help you take others someplace you ain't never <laughs> been before. And you'll get a chance to give him glory and he'll grant unto you the greatest blessing. Put an amen right there, amen. if you can. Somebody looking at me right now, I celebrate the goodness of God to love us so much that knowing that we're going to go through some stuff, he gave us a word that could and will sustain us. If you learn it, Pastor Jake used to always say, the word will work if you work it. It'll work if you work it. Aren't you glad to have a relationship to know God as your heavenly father? Isn't it wonderful to know that you can call on him anytime, anywhere, that he will hear your cry, that he will respond, that he'll give you what you need. Not everything that you want, but surely he will bless you with what you need. And it's marvelous to walk with him, to discover the amazing plan that he has for your life. Somebody looking at me right now, you need to know but if you've never trusted the Lord as your savior, you don't have a relationship with God, you can. That relationship can start today and beloved, it will last a lifetime. It's a prayer, it's a prayer of faith that simply says this, God, I believe that you sent your son. I believe he died for my sins and I believe you raised him from the dead. I open my heart and invite you in. Make me your child in Jesus' name. And that prayer, that prayer will get you started in a relationship with God. And if you prayed that prayer, whether here in this audience or even in the confinement, your living room, wherever you may be, I want to say welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. We want to know, we want to know about your decision to trust Christ as your Lord and Savior. Let us know, let us know. We would love to be your church family. Let us know and we will reach out to you. For those of you who are here, Pastor, that's my prayer, I did it today. Others are saying, Pastor, I'm already saved and I wanna become a part of the Nazarene family. We have some counselors, Sister Trudy, there are others, Sister Kim, Brother John, they'll be right down front here and you can just come down front after I dismiss everyone. You come on down front in these two pews and they will minister, they will find out, they will meet you at the point of your need and we will celebrate together what God wants to do in your life. Amen. Hey, let's thank God for the worship today. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, family, it's time for the offering. It's time for the offering. I know that most of you, most of you, you give through Givelify and PayPal and all of that. And for that, we are so grateful. You have been so faithful. And we just thank God for you. We thank God for your commitment, for your dedication. For those of you who are giving through checks and cash, the, 
tithe box or in the back as you leave and you can give even, even as you go. I tell you, I celebrate what God is doing in the life of Brother Robert Futrell. I tell you, I'm telling you, they were about to count him out and the Lord said, uh-uh, uh-uh. And he's been back at worship. He's up walking and handling his business and thank God for the folk that come alongside. So we love you, we thank God for you. Uh, the boxes that you see in the front and in the back, we're giving, uh, that's a donation that's going to the, the rescue mission. And so thank you for your contributions there. Hope that you've paid attention to the announcements. The mothers uh, have a giveaway coming up Saturday and looking forward to that. And then also Friday, Friday there'll be a press conference as we share and announce uh, the, the Indiana Ag and Technology School that's gonna be kicking off there on the campus of University of Southern Indiana. So you may see that, may see that on the news. Let's bow our heads in prayer. And I do want to ask that you please, please remember, I want to ask that you remember Dr. Ron Rochon and the entire staff and community of the University of Southern Indiana. There was a young man who took his life about a week or so ago. And then just a couple of days, there was another gentleman, another person that lost their life as well. I don't know how, but uh, the USI family has suffered Two, two, two losses this in, in within two weeks. And so please, please remember them in prayer and not just them, but all of our, all of our schools, all of our schools and universities, our children, many of these young folk, they're under a lot of stress and uh, we don't always understand it. We don't always see it, but it, it, that doesn't mean that it's, it isn't real and that they're not going through. So let's pray that God would help us uh, uh, identify and be sensitive how we might be able to minister and pray and support those in their time in their time of need God I want to say thank you thank you for this worship thank you for the privilege of being able to gather together thank you for the faithfulness of your people thank you for their discipline even as they social distance God, we can't stand these masks, but they're necessary. And so we want to do everything we can to be safe. Thank you, dear God, for those who have, have taken, have taken the, the, the vaccines and for those who are doing the boosters. And God, we just lift up everybody. We know that there's some people that are scared and we understand that, we understand that. But God, I pray that you would bless us, help us to overcome our fears and give us, give us the tenacity we need to try to keep one another, one another safe. Thank you for those, thank you for this offering. Thank you for the tithes and give us wisdom as we manage what you've entrusted. Now God, as we depart from this place, may your grace and mercy be upon us. We lift up the families at USI, we lift up the leadership. We pray that, that in the midst of these tragedies, that you will allow something, something marvelous, wonderful uh, ministry to be able to come alongside to sustain and to keep and to make things better. Now may your grace be with us as we depart from this place. In the precious name of Jesus we pray and all God's people said amen, amen. Hey, God bless you. This section, you may be, you may be dismissed. God bless you.